Now, Colorado has some premier ski resorts, but which ones are the best? What are the top five, or really, what is the best ski resort in Colorado? Now, being a Colorado local and having 15 years of snowboarding under my belt, on top of riding every major resort in Colorado, I feel like I am the best to answer this question. And let's just say, I don't think this list is gonna be what you guys expected because I'm not gonna give you the typical tourist answer and I'm not gonna give you the typical Denver person answer. I'm giving you like the legit person that rides these resorts at the top of their line, but also thinks of family, cause I have one. Thinks of terrain park, cause I ripped that. But also thinks of the big mountain tree riding, groomer slaying-ness of the resorts. Because I do it all when it comes to snowboarding. So when I thought of like, what are the best resorts in Colorado, I thought of everything, not just one thing. So keep that in mind before you try to tell me that Monarch Mountain's the best mountain in Colorado because yes, it's an incredible little mountain, but, but let's be real, there's much better ones out there. So with that being said, let's jump into the fifth best ski resort in Colorado. And it's none other than the one that I go to all the time, Keystone Ski Resort. And I know you just lost your mind, why Keystone? Well, Keystone is the most slept on mountain when it comes to tree riding, bull riding, just riding the mountain overall. If you're a beginner, this is not the ideal place to go. Thankfully, Breckenridge is right next to it. But if you're an intermediate blue rider, someone that's past the beginner level, Keystone is literally one of the best places you can go. From really incredible, fun, steep groomers with a bunch of great rollers on them, to literally some of the best tree riding you can get in the state. Keystone is insane. And if you know how to ride it, you literally can show up days after a powder day and get to full top to bottom runs of powder. It is that good. Keystone is an endless powder giver. And if you're willing to put in some work. There's some really incredible bowl riding with the Independence Bowl, which you got a lot easier to get to with the Bergman Express chairlift. On top of that, now you got Bergman Bowl and Erickson Bowl, which are lift access. And then if you put a little bit of work in, you can ride North and South Bowl from the top. Like it's a really rad resort. And of course they have an incredible train park. I absolutely love riding Keystone's train park. It's been better years in the past. Hopefully they bring it back to its glory. That's more of a rail resorts thing. It's got its own area for train park riding and it's the best. So whether you're a beginner, intermediate, Immediate or an expert rider like me, Keystone literally has everything for you. But man, the tree riding, whew, it is so good. Now following up, Keystone is of course, it's sister, brother, neighboring resort, Breckenridge Ski Resort. Breck is an incredible mountain, especially if you're a beginner, you can hang out on peak nine. That terrain is so friendly for people learning how to ski or snowboard. And then when you start getting better, you have peak seven and peak eight, these really fun blue areas to get better at. And then when you start getting it and you're figuring it out. You can head to Peak 10 and get some lift access black diamond runs, but let's be real, why Breckenridge is at the top five is all the upper mountain, the high alpine that is lift access. And if you're willing to put in a little bit of a hike, you can ride some of the raddest inbounds extreme terrain that you can find in Colorado. Between the lake shoots and six senses, you know, those are some really fun technical areas that usually have incredible snow. So you can get up there and really push yourself and get a lot better at big mountain rides riding and you can get up to those areas super fast other than getting parking. Breck is horrible for parking, but that's the very high part. You still got horseshoe bowl. And then if you go a little lower, you're going to pop up into the terrain park, which once again, in years past was an incredible top 10 terrain park. Vail Resorts is in this hating park little world right now. So the parks are dumbing down, but they're still really good, good jumps, good rails built well, really fun park riding. So once again, if you're a beginner, intermediate expert, Breckenridge has literally everything for every level of shredder. Now I bet you're already not agreeing with my list. So drop comments down below. Let me know what are your top five ski resorts in Colorado. I want to hear what you have to say. Now, number three, third best ski resort in Colorado is none other than Crested Butte. Now, Crested Butte is probably one of Colorado's most slept on ski resorts. This mountain is so extreme. Now, they do have a nice beginner lower area and that's where their park is. Their park is definitely probably the worst park on this list. Once again, Vail Resorts. But they have plenty of areas for greens and blues and to learn at the lower park. But let's get into the nitty gritty. Why is Crested Butte so good? Just look at the mountain. It is a double black diamond fiasco. Oh my gosh, you, you wanna get gnarly. And one of the gnarliest people I've ever met on the mountain was at Crested Butte. And he showed us around, took us to all the good stuff. Of course, you got the easy to get to, the, like the peak, the head wall area. These are like kind of go up the main lift and then either take the tow rope and just get to these nice black diamonds, extreme riding, super easy to get to. But where Crested Butte starts to get really good, and once again, you can get powdered days after a powder day, is the third bowl area. Some of the steepest inbounds train that I've ever ridden. And Crested Butte also has the steepest cut run in North America. 
America, which is really cool. It's like 55 degrees. That run's called Rambo. But overall, Crested Butte had super extreme terrain, really fun trees, really fun, just everything. I went there and I was like, I could spend the rest of my life riding here and I would find new terrain every single day. What an incredible mountain. So if you're an extreme rider and you want to challenge yourself, head to Crested Butte. If you're an average rider or a beginner, it still has everything you need and a really fun village. I forgot to mention that, you know, Breck's got an incredible ski town. Keystone's got a really fun village. Crested Butte has a fun village and I will mention the villages going forward. But that's a big reason why these are in the top five because they have everything. They have the mountain and the like, you know, the supporting cast to it, the villages, the lodges, all that type of stuff. Now, before I tell you the second best skiers are in Colorado, and if you're enjoying this video, consider snagging an Evolution sticker. It really does support the dream. It's how I do this for a living, but also it makes you a part of Team Hawk House, throw it on the side of your helmet, throw it on your snowboard, and I can come up to you guys on the mountain and say what up, which is one of my favorite things to do. We do have a ski version for all the skiers out there. Of course, we got the snowboard in many colors, styles, and versions. If you snag it, tag me on Instagram. I'll give you guys gear and sticker shouts in the vlogs. But I cannot say thank you so much to you guys. What a strong community. All you guys snagging the merchandise really just supporting the dream so thank you so much all right resort number two on the list their second best resort in Colorado by the way all these resorts have world-class views on top of them being great resorts like views mountain riding lodging like village area they, they have it all and this one might have one of the best because of the maroon bells but Aspen Snowmass comes in at number two on one of the best resorts in Colorado now they have really good greens and blues and fun train for the, the lower levels but oh my my gosh, their terrain park blew my mind. I didn't know. And everyone was always like, Buttermilk, go to Buttermilk, they got the great park. Dude, I thought I was way more impressed with Snowmasses Park, huge jumps, 22 foot half pipe, rails everywhere, really fun, flowy park. I wish I had more days there. I was only there for one day and only were like half a day in the park. Like that park was insane, had its own chairlift, super laughable, Aspen Snowmass Park. But the mountain, we had a local show us around and I was doing things I've never done on my snowboard. I think it's called the Cirque. That zone was really fun. Of course, you got the Hanging Valley area, just tons of rad black diamond. You, you roll up on this like extreme technical terrain so easy and so fast. And if you walk a little bit, you can get to the Split Trees area, which was super fun. Overall, there's just tons of really rad, good mountain riding around that you can just pop up to really quick. Not a ton of bull extreme riding, but overall the mountain just flowed super well. It's easy to get Get from one side to the other and back and forth and just I was very impressed with snow mass. I will say Crested Butte is way more extreme but as an overall like variety that's available to you snow mass passes Crested Butte into the second place spot. Now the last one literally the best ski resort in Colorado. If I could spend the rest of my life at one resort I had to pick one I could only be there I would pick this resort and you guys should pick this channel to subscribe to and smash the like button on this video because it supports the dream but also I love bringing you guys ski and snowboard content. I have a goal to ride every single ski resort in the United States. You guys can track my progress by going to resortskimaps.com. And that's another reason why my list, pretty accurate. It's, it's up there with being one of the best, just like the number one spot. Telluride Ski Resort. Telluride is insane. Not only have I not had a single bad day at Telluride, basically every single day I've been there has been a powder day. Of course, they have the beginner terrain, the easy greens to learn on, tons of space for you to learn and progress into blues. And then once you go into blues, you can start getting into black diamonds. As you're progressing, the Polar Queen Express has a bunch of really easy trees and fun tree riding there. Dude, the tree riding all over Telluride is insane. And I haven't even got to ride anything under the plunge lift because I'm over by the Revelation Bowl dropping rock lifts, getting most insane powder days in that area. And every time I've showed up, Palmeray Peak, I think is what it's called, has been closed. I haven't even got to hike to the top of the mountain and ride all that extreme terrain. Literally, Telluride has some of the raddest extreme terrain, which is super easy to get to, but it also has hike to. Like the Bald Mountain, we went up there for our snowboard camp and that was an insane riding just powder everywhere i cannot express how much fun i have had every single time i've gone to telluride and they have a crazy good train park it's like super slept on how good their train park is between super fun creative features and just really well built features and large features telluride pretty slept on and of course it not only has a cool village but it has a really incredible town next to it like telluride is the best ski resort i've ever been to and if you can afford to go there absolutely do it and that is one of the problems with most of these resorts is they're expensive to get to. And I will probably make a list of like Colorado's best 
cheap ski resorts or like not expensive resorts to go to because there's some really rad ones out there as well that aren't gonna break your bank. But if you got the money, go check out all five on this list. They are the best ski resorts in Colorado, hands down, Colorado local, 15 years of riding, six years professionally. I know what I'm talking about. But if you disagree, please comment down below. Let me know where I was wrong, what I was wrong with, what are your top five, and as always, thanks for watching. Keep evolving. YouTube really wants you to check this video that's popping up at the end of the card. Cool.